Hi folks, thanks for coming back to my channel. Um, I just thought I'd take this time to answer a few of the questions that I've had in my comments, in the comment section on some of my um, various videos. So I'm going to start off with, uh, it's not really a question, it's just basically a chap called John Stein has said, talk about wireless systems for playing live. Does it work good on stage? Now, I'm probably not... I'm, the right person to answer that question because I've never really used one. Um, I must say though, my personal preference is to have a cable. I, you know, I've I've had the option to use some wireless sometimes, but I think a wireless is only really necessary if you're running around a lot or um, you know you've got to do dance routines and stuff like that. Say say you were playing for Bruno Mars or uh, um, Michael Jackson back in the day, or you know. Miley Cyrus or something which is not the kind of gig I've I've had before so um, I'm all right I'm always okay being tethered to the amp I prefer the cable um, when I have tried them um, I have noticed a little bit of tone loss with uh, a wireless but I know I'm sure that, that, that there's some really good ones out there I have heard I must say I have heard really good things about the line 6 wireless system um, which I, I do hear is not that expensive. Um, I remember seeing, I think the last time I saw Corey Wong, um, he had a wireless system because he does run around the stage. He's, he's kind of moving all over the place. And I can definitely see the benefits of having it if that's what your gig is, if you need to be all over the, all over the stage and covering the whole width and depth of the stage. I can definitely see why a wireless would be handy. But... Um, I think I just like the security of having my guitar plugged into an amp or into my pedals and then into an amp. Um, but yeah, um, so yeah, sorry if that doesn't really answer your question how you wanted it, but um, it's not something I, I've used a lot. Um, uh, Dominic G. Birch sent a message saying, Loving your work, Rob. Would love to see a video about your gear and how you'd like how you like to use it. And so I am going to do another video shortly, um, just a little tour around this. You can barely call it a tour because I'm in such a small room. But um, I'll do a little tour around the studio and, and the gear that I use all the time. Um, but, you know, I, I actually... Now I'm just spending most of my time tracking guitars and doing remote sessions. Um, as you can see, I'm sitting in... A room full of guitar gear so I, I like everything to be close by but I'll do another video on that and go into it in some depth and talk about some of the bits of equipment that I use all the time um, Andreas back sent a video uh, sent a question sorry based on a video I did on tracking some funk guitar on a dance style track um, so Andreas back said sounds great thank you Andreas uh, can you tell us how to achieve the guitar sound? No amp, direct into the console, compressor, etc. Thanks, Andy. Um, so, for that particular video, I used a DI and an amp. Um, for, so, DI for the Strat sounds, and I think, I believe I used my Gibson 335 for a picking sound, and I used uh, my Fender Princeton Reverb for that. Now, um, for funk stuff, quite often I and other people DI the guitar. A DI Strat sound is that kind of iconic 80s funk. You know, it, it, just back in the day, people ju people just used to get the idea ideas down really quickly. DI in a guitar straight into the desk. Um, nowadays, it would be into your D DAW um, with a little bit of a preamp section, a plug-in preamp or a real preamp, a desk preamp um, with a tiny bit of EQ and a bit of compression. Those sounds really, really, really cut through a track of that nature. They're, they're really good for tracks that are, are dense with synthesizers and, and keyboards and you get a very, very quick response, a really quick transient um, response, especially on the... <laughs> Position four on a or position four and position two on a strat, two and four, you get that real clipped, clean, glassy tone. Um, 
and it also works great with telecasters. Prince used to used to DI a lot. I think he used to use an API mic pre from the desk that he was using, and um, it'd go into an 1176 compressor um, just to tame the uh, the peaks, and squash the sounds. That's that sound. Um, but I'm equally happy using an amp as well. You can you can get those sounds out of an amp. It's just in a studio, it's it's easier sometimes to just plug into a DI. You you know when you're tracking, you're listening through the the speakers in the in the studio, the the, the control room speakers, and you're you're getting a good representation of what's going down to the to tape. You know what you're recording. Sometimes when you're using an amp and you're out in the main room you're listening to your guitar through headphones your, your, your amps mic'd up you're listening to studio cans studio headphones and you're not getting a true representation of what your sound is going to be like and you don't really n know that until you go back in the room to listen to what the playback is um, either that or you actually mic up your amp in another room and you sit in the control room and listen to what you're recording but for those sounds you know back in the day and still today I would say I use an equal amount of DI sounds and amp sounds um, and I like to mix them up I like to have both at the same time on, on tracks um, you know if I'm if I'm doing a session for a client I will give them both sometimes I'll give them a DI couple of DI takes and a couple of takes through an amp. Um, an amp is going to give the guitar part a little bit more character and a little bit of fur around the edges you know sometimes I like to use my amps just on the point of dr a little bit of drive um, I, I don't know if I can I showed it here so if I hit that really hard I'm going through my, my little Fender Princeton reverb here, um, which is mic'd up. Uh, I'm, I'm taking a line out of it, and I'm going into a an ISO cab, a Grossman ISO cab at the back of the room, and that's got two microphones on. It's got a, a, a Shure SM57 and a Royer 121, which I blend um, to taste. But the amp has a little bit of grit on it, just a tiny bit of grit on it, um, so that I in a track when you're recording you don't really hear you don't really hear the grit but it, it's just a little bit of valve 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 warmth um, and that's how I set my amps up for doing that sound um, you know nowadays your a lot of plugins inside DAWs are replicating that valve sort of sound you know you you put like a little bit of a valve warmer on it like a um, thermionic culture vulture or something like that to just give sound certain bits of grit and analog warmth because everything's going you know as soon as it leaves your guitar and goes down the cable into the amp and then into the computer it goes into it's digital basically after that so we're forever trying to chase that analog warmth um, so that's what I get from an amp you're getting the tubes valves wherever you wherever you're in the states or the uk i know they call them different things um they just create a little bit of fur around the sound which i love also so um yeah it's 50 50 amp and di i tend to use both um for clean sounds that is so yeah uh i just say experiment see what you like the most um i've done whole albums where i've just done di sounds the first the first Jamiroquai record I played on was mostly DI, just a guitar line straight into a, it was a Focusrite mic pre at the time, and just went straight into the computer with my, uh, a lot of it was my thin line Telecaster, which really set, suits a DI sound for very short clipped single note picking things and a few chordal things. So yeah, I hope that's answered that question. Um... I've had two similar questions, funnily enough, by two different people called Fabrizio. So uh, there's Fabrizio Salis and Fabrizio Peretti. I'm assuming that they they are two different people, but um, one uh, Fabrizio Salis said, "In my honest opinion, sir, very nice, very polite of you. Um, 
I don't get called sir very often. Uh, a very important part of this kind of style and work is choosing your right pick in terms of sound, but also in terms of stability on your right hand fingers. Am I right, Rob? Um, I'd like an opinion from you. I may ask, if I may ask, thanks. You are the best for this stuff. Oh, bless you. Thank you very much. Um, so I do think the pick is quite important, but I do think it's your own personal preference. Now, I've been using these little red Jim Dunlop Jazz 3s, quite thick. Don't ask me how thick they are, but I don't know the thickness. I don't know the millimetres and the gauge and all that stuff. I've been using these forever. I think I started using them... Um, I think I saw it was um, Eric Johnson, one of the REH, -E -H, uh, Starlix, whatever they were called, videos. And I was a big fan, fan of Eric Johnson's playing. And he was using, and I still believe he uses these actually, um, before that, I used to use really small, about the same size Gibson picks that were a little bit more pear-shaped than this. But I've always used small plectrums for 99% of my playing. Um, now, I prefer the sound of these because I play a lot of funk music and I'm always trying to go for a bigger tone. Um, and I like an instant attack. I don't really get on with thin plectrums. Just my personal preference. Not saying anyone else shouldn't do it. It's just me. I don't really get on with thinner plectrums. Um, the only time I do is when I'm doing acoustic guitar parts. Um, when I really want a, that brushy, thin layer of acoustic guitar sounds for strumming. Um, I'll use a thinner pick. I've got a little pot here where, with loads of different gauges of picks in. But 99% of the time, I'm using this, one of these. Now, when I'm playing, I might have talked about this in, in different videos. So if I play a little groove here to D bar. Now, I do that just because I want to show my hand hasn't moved position. I want to show you how much of the plectrum I use. Can you see that? I'm using just that much of the pick. Okay. Now, how I get my sound is, and this is just me, doesn't mean that anyone else has to do it. I'm constantly, my, my thumb, the side of my thumb and the front of my first finger and the pick are, are pretty much always in contact with the string. It's just the sound, just how I'm used to playing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm brushing that part of my thumb and the front of my finger. Um, it's how I've always done it. I didn't even realize I did it until I had to sort of talk about it when I was teaching guitar. But that's the sound I get. So the pick is just there for a little bit of bite. It's just a little tiny bit of bite. Um, uh, yeah, that's that's how I do it. I don't, as a rule, use a compressor. I try as much as I can um, to to get the 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 dynamics of the playing out of my right hand. Um, so if I want to hear a slightly harder sound. I protrude the plectrum a little bit, um, and that's just a taste thing. You know, my ear does it, my brain sends out a message to do it, and I, I don't even know I'm doing it most of the time. But I just protrude the, the plectrum a little bit more, but most of the time it's like that. Okay, so so yeah, I use a, I use a thicker plectrum, um, and that's what I get the sound with um, when I'm doing single note picking things. Find, I'm just going to dig in and find a thinner pick and compare. One second, where's my thin pick? Oh, there you go. Right, thin pick. Right, I've got a thin pick here. This is a 
I can't even read that. I can't even read it. That's how bad my eyes are. Right. So I'm going to compare my regular pick. Right, regular pick, thin pick. Ugh, I, I can't get on with that at all. Um, I find it too, too clicky. Yeah, it's not a sound that I like. It's not a feeling I like. I like... I don't like to hear acoustically in my ears. I can hear the difference. Yeah, it's just not me. Um, I'm used to not hearing that sound. I don't like to hear the, the pick hitting the scratch plate. Um, I like instant attack on the note. Um, and then it's up to me to make the note softer by... by my hand doing the work so that's just my preference um, that's Fabrizio Salis's question um, Fabrizio Peretti asked how hard should I hit the strings I feel like to get the right tone to be tight I need to hit pretty hard on my guitars and I, you look to be doing that as well yeah um, I think yeah if you want a harder more a faster attack you, you spank it a little bit harder if you want a softer attack, you of course hit it a little bit softer. Um, I like to do that both. I like to do both where... If you can hear that, I'm hitting things harder sometimes and then getting softer strokes. In, even though I'm just moving my hand at the same tempo, So, to practice that, I would, I'd get a chord, you know, uh, let me just use an A minor 7. You want to, I mean, I, I did speak about this um, when teaching a lesson the other day. You want to get your rhythm and then... Your, your right hand should be playing the rhythm. Even though your hand is doing that, doing sixteenths, um, down, up, down, up, down, up, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Even though your hand is doing that, you get your, your rhythm. So say it's a bump, 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 bump. You want to be able to brush the strings but still hear that rhythm by hitting the rhythm, hitting the, the string slightly harder for that rhythm. So it goes like this, three, four. Can you hear that? So that when you introduce the chord in, So in answer to Fabrizio Peretti's question, both hard and soft. If you want a spankier sound, hit it slightly harder, but make sure you don't speed up while you're doing it. You know, you should get, I, I always compare it to a conga player. How someone plays the congas, study how they play the congas. They're hitting soft and hard, hard hits. Um, and you, by doing that, they're creating rhythmic patterns. Um, and it's the soft bit, soft things that are the sort of almost the bed of the of the pattern. And then when they hit dynamically harder, that's where you get your your rhythmic dancing pattern, your groove. Um, so yeah, I hope that's answered your question. Um, uh, n last question here uh, was from Lee Hodgson. Um, actually, yeah, he he just asked the same similar question about. Um, I'm mildly surprised that you have a standard guitar amp combo for this style of guitar. Fender's are clean sounding of course, talking about the amps, but many funk players, e.g. Nile Rogers, I believe go for a DI sound and no amp. Um, I just wondered what your thoughts are about that. 
I'm a Valve guy. I don't know if you know about Lee Hodgson. He's a UK, London-based, great guitar player. Um, he's a he, he does a lot of country styles, and uh, he recently sent over a couple of videos for me to check out of him playing, and he's he's so good. He's really, really good, um, and a really, really lovely, lovely chap as well. So, um, yeah, same thing. I, I answered this earlier. Yeah, I use amps, uh, Fender amps, and DI, you know, uh, I do, I do believe that some of the, when you're listening to, if you listen to Sheik, for example, there are a lot of examples of him using a DI sound, but then I've also heard examples of him using amps. Um, I think I heard a story about him using an amp where he, his amp was on a staircase in the studio that he was working in, and he would do a take, and the microphone would be set up in front of the amp, and then for the double track of the take, they moved the amp two steps up and left the microphone where it was. And then he did a triple track and then they left the microphone where it was and then they moved the amp another couple of steps up. Just a myth, um, but maybe it's just a myth. I don't know whether he did it or not, but I think it's a really cool idea to do that. I've done all kinds of things. I've done things, there was a song we played on, uh, I played on called don't give hate a chance, um, uh, which is on a Jamura Cry record, and I mic'd up my strings. They mic'd up my strings, so I had a, a small Neumann pencil mic. I think it was a KM84, directly on my strings, and my amp mic'd up as well. So, so they blended the sound of the 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 acoustics, acoustic sound of my guitar, with an amp sound so you get the glassy bite of the of the the, stri the pick hitting the strings and added to the amp i think anything goes really you just got got to experiment and try these things out um you know uh you know i know that Nile rogers for example has a specific di box that he uses to get his tone uh, you know i can't I'm, I'm not sure what it was called actually um I think it's a, a countryman or something like that, but it's a specific box that he's used to to get his, his tone. So um, anything goes, really. I think I think anything goes. Try it all out and try various things out on different tracks. Um, and I, I think, you know, I know speaking to Corey Wong and seeing the videos that quite often he uses a specific set of plugins um, to get his sound of his of his Strat, you know, DI Strat. Um, recorded straight in uses a, a preamp plug-in with some compressors on it and that's his sound for for a lot of the records he's played on so yeah try it all um thanks for sending in your questions if you've got any more questions please leave them in the comment bin comment section comment bin I'm, i've nicked that from uh tom bukovac's page i keep saying comment bin but um thanks for sending them in if you've got any more send more um and I'll get to them as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Of course, if you're new here, um, take a look around my other videos. Hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. And you'll get an update every time I release a new video. Take care. See you soon.